In the summer of 2013, my friends and I went out to the lake for a long August weekend. We heard of a party that was taking place that night, about a half an hour away from where we were staying, and decided to meet up with some other friends who were attending. Mostly everyone was drunk at this point. It was already 10pm, and since I only had a couple of drinks throughout the day, I decided that I would drive one of the vehicles. Since there was eight or so of us, we had to take two vehicles. We loaded up the cars with tents and booze since we had planned on staying the night, and off we went. The drive started out pretty normal. We didn't know exactly where we were going, so we had to rely on the cell phone GPS, which didn't work too well since we were in Cavan County. The vehicle that I was driving left about 15 minutes before the other one because they were playing some frisbee game where you had to knock off a bottle on a post, and I guess they had money on the game or something. I had been going out to the lake for my entire life at this point, but the fact that I had a really crappy GPS coupled with headlights that were very dim made for a challenging experience. We knew that we weren't far from the party, but it was evident that we were kind of lost. One thing about the area that we were in is that there are a lot of people around. There are stretches of road at night where you won't see another car, ever, but there's always plenty of cabins nearby. The population of this area between winter and summer changes from roughly 5,000 to 50,000. After a good amount of driving, we see a car ahead of us with its hazard lights on. We decided to ask whoever it was for directions. Not a good idea. We pulled up beside the car. I look over and see a guy who looked to be not much older than us, but again it was hard to tell. He appeared to be in his mid-twenties, with wide frame glasses and shoulder length hair under a mesh cap. He was just staring ahead, looking into the distance. Hey buddy, you don't happen to know where Spruce Bend is, do you? We were going to a party and got lost. No response. The guy just kept looking ahead. You alright? I asked. Yeah, yeah. Just make your next left. And it'll be alright after that. Thank you, much appreciated. So we keep going, and notice that this guy has turned off his hazard lights and is following a distance behind us. A bit strange, but we didn't think much of it at the time. We make the left that he suggested onto a really rough, bumpy gravel road and took it for roughly three miles. The road was really shitty, but I could see the glow of headlights behind me. The first right was an unmarked dirt road that didn't appear to go very far. We slowed down and debated turning down this road, and looking back, I'm glad we didn't. The guy was still following us, and we decided to peel out of there. He followed us right on our tail the whole way back down to the road. The road had no cabins, no identifying features, and no turns until we got to the end. Some of the guys in the car wanted to pull over. There was five of us, and one of him. And they figured that we could take him. But the guy seemed nuts. I wasn't about to let some lunatic with a gun shoot all of us. So I kept driving, hung a right at the end of the road, which led out to the highway. He stopped following us at that point. As we took off, the image of his car sitting at the end of that road, not moving, as we sped off into the distance, is embedded in my mind. We called the other car and they seemed to have a better GPS than we did and they told us where to go. The party was great, but I think that night still sits with us and I don't ever want to come across another car with its hazards on, on a lonely unmarked road in the heat of the summer, again. Years ago, I was home from university and was spending the evening with my girlfriend. We were feeling a little frisky, but since we were home from college at our parents' houses, we decided to go for a little drive. Our hometown was fairly rural, so it didn't take much time for us to drive out somewhere on a country road near an alfalfa field where we could have some privacy. 
Hardly anyone ever drove past here, maybe one truck every hour or so. So the engine is off, the lights are off, and our seats are reclined. My car was small, so there wasn't really any room to get in the back and go at it. But tenderness is tenderness, rather there's a stick shift between you or not. But that night, I'm glad I had to stay in the driver's seat. Just as things start to get real heated, I see some headlights in my rearview mirror coming up the road. It's not a big deal, so I toned down the action a bit waiting for it to pass. But as the truck got closer, its headlights suddenly went dark. My girlfriend wasn't aware of this. I pulled away a bit out of curiosity. Then I heard the coasting gravelly crunch of a vehicle pulling off onto the gravel behind us. It was dark out there, no streetlights or anything to go by, but with what moon there was, I could barely make out the outline of a truck behind us. No cab lights, no running engine. I asked my girlfriend if her door was locked. This stopped her dead in her tracks. She said that it was and asked why. I told her that there was someone behind us, parked in the gravel. She immediately straightened herself up and I put my seat back up, never taking my eyes off my mirror. Then I saw the driver's side door to the truck open. The cab light still didn't turn on in the truck and I never saw anyone get out, but that was my sign to get out of there. I told my girlfriend that we needed to leave now to which she quietly replied, Okay. I started up the vehicle, and trying my best not to spin out in the gravel, drove as fast as I could onto the road. We drove back in silence for about two minutes, heading back towards the town, when I noticed that I could not see the sky clearly behind the vehicle. We were being followed. The truck still did not have its headlights on, but it was tailgating me very closely. I calmly informed my girlfriend that they were behind us, but we had plenty of gas and we would get back to town just fine. No big deal. She said, okay, in that little voice again and went silent, glancing back every so often. This continued for about two minutes and I briefly considered calling the police before the headlights behind me flared on. The truck revved its engine and pulled into the other lane. We were still on a two-lane asphalt country road. It hauled past me like a bat out of hell. I felt like I should take her home at this point. But the last thing I wanted was for those assholes to follow us to where she lived. Whoever they were, they made me uneasy. I told her as much and she agreed. We wove a flighty path through several nice neighborhoods before pulling into a cul-de-sac where we could sit and wait to see if the truck was still around. We never saw the truck again that night, but sitting in the cul-de-sac did give us the opportunity to have the intimate time that we had been wanting, all the more intense due to the constantly watching to make sure we were safe. Looking back, I'm sure it was some country farm people who were used to catching kids making out near their fields. They probably wanted to bang on our windows to give us a good scare for fun, but I have to wonder why they would follow us for so long and why they passed us the way they did. Were they out for a joyride? Or were they looking for some entertainment? This happened about 10 years ago, when I was 19. I had been working second shift at the front desk of the local sheriff's department, with my shift ending at 10 at night this night was the beginning of my weekend, and I was picking up my friend from her aunt's to stay at my house. My friend's aunt lived in a trailer park about five miles outside of town, and you have to take a bunch of twisty country roads to get to. So I'm still on the main route talking on my cell phone with my boyfriend, now husband, who was based at Camp Pendleton then. I know this is bad, but it was late, and there was hardly any other cars on the road, and I'm a careful driver. But things got eventful with a quickness as I approached the turnoff for the back roads to my friend's aunt's. The turnoff was a four-way stop, and there was a truck in the oncoming lane signaling to turn the opposite way I was. 
but as I turned, the truck changes course and starts following me. I'm talking this truck was on my bumper with its brights on. I was driving an early model Cavalier, so the headlights lit up the inside of my car. I'm not freaking out yet, because drunk assholes behind the wheel is a pretty common occurrence where I'm from. My biggest fear at the moment was that he was going to hit my car. Then the truck speeds around me and starts to slow down. He was trying to pull me over, but I actually finally got a good look at the truck and relayed everything to my boyfriend over the phone. The make, model, and color. But I couldn't read the license plate because it was caked in mud. This goes on for a little bit. The truck pulls in front of me and slows to a stop. I go back around him and finally just decide to take the initiative and stop. I figure that I'll keep my car running and only crack my window. It's a country road in between fields. It would be virtually impossible to really block a car in on the road, unless you're terrified of driving in grass. So I stop and crack my window about two inches and keep my phone by my ear. The truck pulls up beside me. The driver opens his passenger window and leans across his seats to stare at me. Is there a problem? I ask. He doesn't answer. Can I help you? Finally, he snaps out of it and says, I thought you were somebody else. That made sense to me. I drove a really common car for the area. I knew of at least four others that were even the same color as mine. I breathed a huge sigh of relief. Okay, well, have a good night. I start driving again, but the guy pulls right back onto my bumper and starts riding my ass. He's now trying to bump my car. Now I'm panicking. I tell my boyfriend where exactly I am and for him to call my dispatch and tell them to start looking for the truck. I'm convinced that I'm going to be abducted, but my boyfriend refuses to hang up. Finally I drive up on the trailer park. I don't even brake or signal. I turn at 50 miles per hour. To this day, I don't know how I held the road, but I did. And the truck is still on my ass. I immediately lay on my horn, thinking that if this guy is going to get me, then somebody is going to see him do it. I blare the horn all the way to my friend's aunt's driveway, and the truck pulls in behind me. My friend and her aunt are both on the front porch. I notice the pure horror on their faces before the guy from the truck is outside my window, banging on it with both hands, screaming, I thought you were somebody else over and over again. He then jumps back in his truck and peels out. It took forever to calm my boyfriend down and then to calm myself down, but eventually everyone relaxed. My friend and I got on with our night and the next morning we went and filed a police report. Unfortunately without the license plate number there wasn't much they could do, but I never did see that truck again and I didn't end up a body on the roadside which is a big plus.